let's kick off then. Um, let me welcome you uh, once again, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. This is a session by Astrops Academy. Uh, many of you know us, so many of you know this is part of uh, our regular mini class sessions where we're trying to share tips from the tech and digital uh, world. Uh, you can always find those, uh, find those sessions uh, on our social media or where we try to invite you to the next ones. We usually do several of them uh, per month. So make sure you tune in next time as well in case you want to, you, know, you find it interesting and you want to continue learning with us. For those who don't know Astrolabs, uh, which I see a few new names, uh, let me just quickly introduce us. Uh, we are a growth enabling company. We are helping people and companies grow their business or career through uh, several different uh, ways. One of them is our academy where we provide courses in digital marketing, data, coding, et cetera. Uh, and other ways are, for example, our co-working. You might know our co-working space in GLT. We have spaces in Riyadh. We have uh, companies with setup. And we also help with uh, recruitment through Astrops Talent. So these are just a few ways you guys can engage with us. Uh, we will tell you more probably about what we're doing uh, in the end in case uh, this will make sense uh, because today we have exciting topic. We are speaking about how to create Instagram campaigns that will drive sales. Uh, Lama, uh, one of our instructors in uh, digital marketing courses will take you through how to actually sell your products through Instagram campaigns, uh, how to set it up, how to do, how to do it in the right way. Uh, she has very vast e-commerce experience from both big and small uh, brands. So she's the uh, best person probably to learn this from. Excited for the session uh, and over to you, Lama. Thank you so much, Lucas. Thank you for the great introduction. And hi, everyone. Welcome to the live course today. I'm very happy to see that a lot of you are actually in the e-commerce startups established. You're all welcome. Uh, and what we're going to do today is an introduction. It's a very good introduction and very good uh, like first, basically, uh, experience for you to know more about uh, how can you use Instagram advertising to really increase your sales and specifically increase your sales. We want to have the session as interactive as possible. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you've had run campaigns before on Instagram and you have any experience that you would love to share with us, please feel free to do so. Uh, I'm just going to give you a very quick overview about myself. My name is Dama Youssef. I'm a digital marketing consultant and a trainer. I have around 10 years of experience in digital marketing. And I, what I usually, what I do on a daily basis for the past two years is that I actually work with e-commerce startups or with digital startups in general. And I had them with performance marketing, with growth marketing. So a lot of the things that we're gonna, I'm going to talk about today, the campaign structure, how do we set up campaigns, are, as act, are exactly the things that I do on a daily basis for clients. And, and, and we use a lot of this specifically for e-commerce um, clients who wanna increase their conversions and wanna increase their sales directly by uh, Instagram. Ask questions, uh, feel free to interrupt, speak up if anything is not clear and let's, let's learn as much as possible together as a group. I'd always love to hear your uh, feedback. So what are we exactly going to be covering today? We're going to talk about the main elements of an Instagram campaign structure. And I know that some of you might have some experience running ads on Instagram, uh, maybe through the app itself by boosting the app. Just to let you know what we're going to talk about today and the way we would usually recommend that you do it is by setting up these ads through the Facebook Business Manager specifically which is a tool by Facebook. It's a free tool where you can sign up, create an account, and you can run ads on both Facebook and Instagram and even Messenger and other networks which are called audience networks. We would always recommend that you use this specifically for conversion campaigns for several reasons. And the biggest reason and one of the main reasons, if you want to run conversion campaigns, and by conversion campaigns, I mean campaigns that with an objective to directly drive sales to your e-commerce, you need to, these ads, these types of ads and these types of campaigns cannot be run through your Instagram app. They must be done through your Facebook Business Manager account. In addition to this, there are so many benefits for running a Facebook Business Manager account. And now when we actually start talking about campaign structures and when I demo a campaign for you, you'll understand the amount of learning that you can get depth target, targeting and tracking and optimization that is just not available in the app 
uh, of, uh, advertising uh, options. So we're going to talk about the main elements of the campaign structure within the Facebook Business Manager. We're going to talk about the different types of audiences you can actually target on Instagram, how to set up a conversion campaign on Facebook Business Manager, how to geo-target your audience on Instagram, and then how to retarget Instagram followers with a conversion campaign. The reason why I specifically chose this, and now when we talk more about audiences, you're going to see that there are actually so many different types of audiences that you can target. But retargeting your Instagram followers or retargeting people who engage with your Instagram account is actually a, a very powerful uh, audience to create and retarget, especially if you're starting up and you had already had an Instagram account with some engagement for a few months or a year or so on. So the first thing that we wanted to ask, which is the obvious question, why advertise on Instagram? Why is Instagram important? Obviously, if you're all here, <laughs> you're already convinced of the importance of Instagram, especially in the Middle East region. And if I want to be specific, especially in the GCC region, if I want to compare Instagram versus Facebook in the GCC, and I'm talking from my experience running ads, I can tell you that Instagram is actually much better and reaching the right target audience at return on ad spend and at finding people who are actually going to buy products, not just engage or uh, follow or comment or share. These are not bad things but they don't always equate to sales. And what we're interested in is actually conversions and sales. So Instagram has around 1.074 billion average monthly users. This is worldwide, of course. Uh, the, 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 you can actually get a lot of accurate targeting, tracking, and it is cost effective compared to other channels, compared to offline advertising, compared to all the other kind of advertising that they're, they're not going to help you drive target sales to your e-commerce business. And you can actually, uh, ha you can still set up advertising on Instagram for different options, for different objectives. What do I mean by that? If you're going to tell me that you are a business and your main model for using your website is to generate leads, or you are a car dealership and you want to get more people to uh, uh, basically to sign up for drive, uh, for test drives, or you are uh, you have a website for you for a clinic or for a salon and you want to get more bookings, essentially Instagram can actually help you with. Uh, getting any of those objectives done and reaching any type of customers and any type of objective. What we're going to talk about today is mainly conversion campaigns because these are the type of campaigns that can help you drive sales. And these are the campaigns that are designed by Instagram to help you drive more sales. Okay, so the first thing I always like to talk about and the first thing that I always like to start any training, any discussion, any talks about campaigns is this. And this is basically the campaign structure on Instagram or specifically on Facebook Business Manager. Why? When we open the uh, platform together in a bit and I show you the campaign structure and I show you the steps, everything in Facebook Business Manager account is designed in the same way, is designed where you need to, where you start with a campaign level and then you have ad sets and then you have ads. And by the way, every digital advertising platform out there, whether it is Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, Google advertising, each one of those has some sort of structure and the campaigns are usually grouped into campaigns an ad set or an ad group or an ad. And then what you need to understand is what usually gets determined at each level of this process. And that is basically what we're going to talk about. So the first layer or the first level when you're setting up a campaign on Business Manager that you need to understand it is called a campaign. So this is the campaign level. At your campaign level, which is usually the first step of setting up a campaign, you determine a few important things. It's a, there are very few options that you actually have to select at the campaign level. But the most important thing is actually your campaign objective. What do I mean by a campaign objective? Campaign objectives are derived from the main digital uh, funnel or the main sales funnel. So your campaigns are either for awareness objectives or for consideration objectives or for conversion objectives. So do you want to get more people to know about your business 
or do you know do you want to get more people to watch a video or to visit simply visit your website or to engage with your instagram or do you want to get more people to convert and then in this specific case we want more people to buy products from your website or from your app every campaign and this is something very important to know every campaign can only have one objective which means if you want to increase awareness and you want to increase sales you need to run two separate campaigns they cannot be on the same campaign because facebook will optimize and by the way just a disclaimer when i say facebook i also mean instagram so if they're one group and they're one company so everything that happens for facebook happens for instagram so you're going to often hear me say facebook but we are talking about instagram mainly here as a channel now the second level of your uh, campaign is usually the ad set level. And I think a campaign can only have one objective, but a campaign can actually have multiple ad sets. And now you will understand what do we mean that a campaign can actually have multiple ad sets. What do you usually is determined at the ad set level? What is determined at the ad set level is the targeting. So who is your target audience? What are the channels, uh, the budgets? When do you want this ad set to start? So an ad set is actually a group of ads grouped together and they target a specific target audience. In a lot of the times or most of the times that we actually do is you're going to have one campaign. Let's say you want to, the, your campaign objective or what you want to achieve is you want to increase the sales of an online beauty website or of an online clothing website. You will have one campaign for sales, but then you're going to group your audiences into clusters of, uh, of, of, of target audience males versus females, people in Saudi versus people in UAE, younger, younger target audience versus an older target audience. You could be also separating them by language. You could be separating them by interest. Let's say you wanna do something dedicated for shoes and something dedicated for clothing. Now the question is why, right? Why do we have multiple ad sets and why do we separate our campaign into different ad sets and we do all of that? There are several reasons why we do this. I'm just gonna try to mention the most important things. One of the most important things is if you look at the ads and by the ads here, this is actually the part that the user sees. So this is the product image and the description and the link. This is what we as users are actually used to seeing on Instagram. If you, uh, okay, I'm gonna ask, Sorry guys, there is a lot of background noise. If you can, uh, sorry, one minute. I just need to mute. Uh, I'm unable to mute. Sorry guys. Okay, sorry, there's someone with, with that with the mic is open. Can you please just mute yourself? Okay, thank you. So, uh, sorry guys about that. So the reason, one of the main reasons why we can have uh, we're gonna have we have multiple assets within the campaign. First of all, is to group our target audiences together. Secondly is in order to show the relevant target audience, the same images and the same videos and the same products that are most relevant to them. And this is going to help our campaign performance. So imagine something like this. Imagine if I'm an e-commerce business that sells clothing for men and women. If I, according to the structure, according to this diagram and the way Facebook advert, Instagram advertising works, if I put men and women in the same target, in the same ad set, so I'm putting them in the same target, it means and then in the ad level, I am showing products of men and products of women. It means that both men and women could either see a men ads or, a, or, a, or an ad that is uh, intended for women. But if we separate audiences, then we can control the messaging and we can control the targets. We can also control how much budget do we want to allocate. So there are so many benefits for having multiple ad sets. Uh, uh, in, terms, in terms of whether it is to organize your audiences, whether it is to improve your targeting, whether it is to show the most relevant product. And it's also for testing a lot of time and a big, time, uh, a big part of what we do in advertising is that we wanna test multiple, 
uh, audiences. So when we actually do it that way, when we separate into multiple ad sets, we are able to uh, we're able to do that. We are able to separate to 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 test uh, an interest versus another. We're able to test multiple types of audiences uh, in the same campaign. So what? If we want to deep dive or we want to go into a little bit of details of each one of those levels and what does it mean? The same, the first level, and we said this is actually the campaign level. This is the level where you have to determine the objective of your campaign. All of those campaign objectives are the kind of objectives that you can run for um, uh, on Instagram or on Facebook. If we want to talk specifically about the type of campaign that you would run to increase sales, these campaigns are called conversion campaigns. By definition, a conversion in digital is every time you're taking someone from one channel to the other to perform an event, to perform an action or make an event. So every time you're taking someone from an Instagram ad or from a Facebook ad to an external website or an app, to buy something or to sign up or to uh, book a, a, a meeting or book a call or whatever it is, this is called a conversion. And the sales campaigns or the campaigns that you should set up to increase your sales are called conversion campaigns. The, the, now let's talk about the asset level. And the asset level is where a lot of the work actually happens. And this is the ads and where the majority of options and the majority of the planning for the campaign happens. The asset level, and this is the second level of your campaign. This is where you have to determine the budget. This is where you determine your target audience. And this is where you determine anything that has to do with channels and placements. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail of each one of them. Budget is how much do you actually want to spend on this campaign? How much do you want to spend on a daily basis or on the lifetime of your campaign? How many dollars do you want to spend? This is the amount that you are willing to invest in it. Your campaign schedule is when do you want this campaign to start and when do you want it to end? You can also schedule campaigns for the future on Instagram. So let's say you want the campaign to go live on a specific time after two weeks. You can also schedule that. The language is what is the language of your target audience? Are you targeting someone who speaks English or speaks Arabic on a specific country? Or let's say you have a product that is especially for French speakers in the UAE, then you can also target based on the target audience's language. Target audience, and I'm going to talk about audiences and the second thing, and audiences and the ability to target is one of the most the biggest strength of Instagram and Facebook advertising, and we're going to talk about it later. You select the location, the demographic, the gender, the age group. All of that happens at the ad set level, which is the second level of your campaign. You also select your channels and placements. What do we mean by channels and placements? Channels, because Facebook Business Manager actually allows you to advertise on Facebook, on Instagram, on something called Audience Network, as well as um, uh, Messenger. If you specifically want to advertise on Instagram, and that's what we were discussing, you have to manually select Instagram as the channel you want people to actually see your ad on. In addition to that, you can actually select the placement. What do you mean by a placement? The placement is simply the position of your ad. Where do you want your customers to see your ad? Do you want them to see it when they are uh, on Instagram stories or while they are on Instagram Explore, Instagram Newsfeed, or Instagram um, Reels now? So a placement is what is the position of your ad and where is your ad going to be viewed or shown for your target audience? OK. Let's talk now about audiences and the different types of audiences. There are three main types of audiences that you can create on, on Facebook Business Manager and use to target on Instagram. The first one is core audiences or saved audiences. The second one is custom audiences. And the third one is lookalike audiences. We, I talk about the names and I mentioned the jargon, not to show off, <laughs> but simply because when you are on Facebook Business Manager, you're going to have to manually choose which audience you want to target. And when you're creating the tar these audiences, you have to know the differences between them because this is how they are actually named within a Facebook Business Manager. A core audience or a saved audience, 
this isn't the type of audience that you build and customize based on interests, based on behaviors, and based on basically demographics and psychographics. An example of a core audience would be, if I, am, uh, if I have a new business selling uh, shoes online or selling kitchen equipment online, and I want to target uh, and I want to, uh, and I'm targeting women between the age of 22 to 45, who are, let's say we're talking about cooking equipment, women between the age of 22 to uh, 55, who live, in, who live in Dubai, who are interested in cooking or interested in cooking school or are interested in cooking channels. This is the type of target audience that we were or interested in tavula for example this is the type of audience that we would say is a core audience or a safe audience this is based on the demographics and the psychographics of your target audience you don't actually know who who these people are you don't know uh, they did not have any prior interaction with your website or with your instagram page or anything all what you know is that the profile of that person would fit the profile of someone who might be interested in buying from you. So this is these are interest-based or behavior-based audiences. The second type of audiences are called custom audiences, and these are actually audiences that had some sort of previous interaction with your business. What do I mean by this? Look at all of these types of audiences. All of these are actually types of custom audiences, and they are one of the main strengths of uh, Instagram targeting or for Facebook business manager targeting. What are custom audiences and how can they help you? Uh, uh, custom audiences can actually help you target people uh, based on someone that has visited your website before, target uh, people uh, who have watched a video, target people who actually visited your Instagram before or people who have engaged with your Instagram before, or even if you have an actual list, if so you have an Excel sheet that has email addresses, phone numbers of people that has either shown previous interest or shopped from you before, you can actually upload this to Facebook and Instagram, create a custom audience that is called a customer list. And then what's gonna happen is that Facebook will find these people by look, by matching their email addresses and phone numbers with the data that they have, and you will be able to retarget them. So all of those retargeting ads that you see, that the, the, I know the annoying one that follow you everywhere you go on Instagram and follow you everywhere that you go on Facebook, these are essentially called remarketing or retargeting audiences, and they are a type of custom audience that you can create on uh, Facebook Business Manager. The last type of audiences that we have on Facebook that or that is on Instagram, this is actually called a, a lookalike audiences. So what are lookalike audiences? Lookalike audiences are audiences that look like <laughs> your custom audiences. What do we, why do we have them and why do we use them? So uh, let's say that you currently have a website that you sell online, you've been selling for the past one year, and you already have around 500 customers that people have bought from you, but you are looking for new customers. The best new customers you can be targeting are people who look like your existing customer. So the way lookalike audiences happen is that you provide Facebook with a custom audience. So I will tell Facebook here, this is a list of all the people who have shopped with me in the past one year and I want to find new people, more people that look like them. So what Facebook then does is after you upload the custom audience and you select the custom audience, what they do is that they look at the demographics and the psychographics and what is common between these people and they look at the population of the country that you want to target. Let's say you are in the UAE and you currently have 500 customers but you want to find more customers that look like your customer audience. This is how lookalike audiences work. Facebook will look at the existing customer base and based on their understanding of their behavior, demographics, their interests, will help you create a lookalike audience. So people who actually are not them, but people who look a lot like them and you can target to sell to more people. Now, if we want to talk about the last level of the campaign, and that is the ad level, 
The ad level actually is the, the section of the ad or the section of the campaign that the customers actually see. If you think about it, everything that we've just talked about in terms of targeting and budgets and objectives and audiences and locations and gender, this is us marketeers, business owners, setting up the campaign, selecting the right target audience, trying to find the right people who are gonna, um, who would wa wanna buy from us. But what the customer actually see, what the target audience sees at the end is this. They see an image with a product, a text, and a call to action button. Everything that the customer eventually sees, you have to set it up or you create it at the last level of the campaign, and that is the ad level. It is still as important. It's actually one of the most important things because even if you have the best targeting and the best audiences and the best budget and the best planning, but you are showing customers a relevant product or you're showing them the wrong product or you're taking them to a website page that is not working or that is not optimized or it's not relevant, your campaign is not going to be successful. So it is very, it is just as it's important to pay attention to your to the kind of images, to the kind of text, and to the kind of links that you test your that you send your customers uh, to. Now, the last thing that I want to mention, and this is something very important, and unfortunately, before we actually go and set up a campaign together on Instagram, one of the main things and one of the main issues, and I just find that. Um, unfortunately, not a lot of e-commerce businesses or not a lot of people who have websites are aware of something called the Facebook pixel. So what is exactly a Facebook pixel and why is a Facebook pixel important? Facebook pixel is actually a piece of code. It is a type of something called a JavaScript. It's, it's similar to what you know if you're, if you're familiar with cookies, with website cookies, Facebook pixel is something similar. It is a piece of code that you have to put on your website. You have to create it from Facebook Business Manager, add it to your website in order to uh, be able to run conversion campaigns. So the first thing I want to tell you, if you wanna run conversion campaigns to drive more sales and send people to your website to buy, you have to have a pixel. It's not optional. It's not whether I should have it or not. You cannot actually set up a campaign unless you have a Facebook pixel set up. In addition to this, the, the Facebook pixel is how, so what is basically the, the purpose of the Facebook pixel? It's a piece of code that has a unique code ID that you insert on your website. What does this code does? This code tracks the behavior of any users that visit your website, buys from your website, add products to cart, spends any amount of time on your website, does any action on your website. Then they send all of this information back to Facebook Business Manager and specifically to your campaign. So in order to, fill, to tell Facebook, I want to run a campaign on my specific website, www.shop.com, you need to have a pixel that links your Facebook Business Manager account with your website. And I want you to think about it like this. If, you, if I'm running an ad on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, and I click, and the user clicks on the ad and they go to the website, as soon as the user leaves Facebook, Facebook becomes in the dark. They don't know how did the user behave, whether the campaign actually performed well or not. Did this customer, after clicking on the ad, bought something or not? This is where the pixel comes in play. The pixel are Facebook's eyes on external websites. Through this pixel, Facebook is actually able to, um, so through this pixel, Facebook is able to understand. After someone sees this ad on Instagram, they click on it and do they go to www.shop.com? What do they do? Do they buy? Do they visit? Uh, how much did they actually uh, buy? What was the value of their order? So in order to be able, so in order for Facebook to be able to actually run your conversion campaign, report on your ca conversion campaign, track and optimize the delivery, you need to have a Facebook pixel inserted on your website. Okay, so now let's actually create a campaign together on Facebook Business Manager and go through the different steps that we want to do. This is the uh, Facebook Business Manager that I have told you about. It's sim you can simply access it by going to business.com. Um, I'm going to put the link. It's Facebook. It's business.facebook.com. And for your Business Manager account, 
is the place where you can actually run um, your Instagram campaigns, Facebook campaigns, where you can track the results, where you can actually set up your pixels and all of that. Now, because the because of the time restriction that we have for today's session, we're not going to talk about the Facebook pixel specifically, but how do you actually set up your Facebook, set up, a, sorry, your Facebook business manager? How do you create audiences and how do you run ads? Your Facebook business manager account has a collection of tools. The ads manager tool is what we're going to use now to actually set up ads. But in addition to this, you have something called audience managers or audiences, and you also have events manager. Events manager is the tool that you would actually use to create a new pixel. If you wanna create a new pixel, and basically you want to connect your business ad account to your uh, website, this is where you do it through Facebook business manager and specifically through events manager. Now, if you wanna create a campaign together, and let's say I want to create a campaign to target people or to retarget someone who has been engaging with my Instagram page in the past uh, few um, uh, months, and I wanna target them with specifically a conversion campaign. So one thing that's very important I want you to know, anytime you wanna create a campaign, you should start by planning it. I still plan on an Excel sheet and I put all the different levels of my campaign. I divide the budget and then I divide the target audiences and the ads and the copies and based on it, I actually plan. The second thing that you want to do is to actually um, uh, look at the create any custom audiences or lookalike audiences. So as I mentioned, if you want in this case, to create a, a campaign, a conversion campaign, a sales campaign, and target people who have uh, create, um, sorry, and target people who have um, engaged with your Instagram profile before. The first step is to actually to create the audience. How do you create an audience like this? So, I, I just a very quick overview of the Facebook Business Manager. You need to understand that after you create a Facebook business, first of all, you need to have a Facebook business profile for your business. Whether you're going to use it or not, this is a requirement of running ads on Facebook Business Manager. The second thing is that you need to have your Instagram account as a business Instagram account and actually connect it to your Facebook Business Manager account. Once your Facebook Business Manager account, your Facebook page, your Facebook Business page, and your Ads Manager, I know it's a lot of terms, but this is how <laughs> how it is. Once they're all connected together, you are able to create any type of a custom audience that you want. If you want to create specifically website custom audiences, as I've actually mentioned here, you need to have your pixel implemented. So how do you create a custom audience for people who have engaged with your Instagram? You go to your audiences section under business manager. So under business manager, there is something called audiences and we're gonna click on it. And then here, click on the option, create audience. This type of audience is actually is a, is a type of a custom audience. So you have to click on custom audience and then specifically choose Instagram account as your source and click on next. Once you do this, Instagram, Facebook Business Manager actually is gonna give you a, a quite, a, quite a lot of options to choose from. But basically, what is the type of custom, what is the type of audiences that you want to create? Now, don't worry about this whole source thing. This is an issue only if you have, uh, only if you actually have multiple um, uh, Instagram accounts. In your case, you're probably just going to have one. It's just because I manage different accounts. I actually have multiple ones. But by the source, you basically need to tell Facebook, if you're telling Facebook here, I am interested in people who have engaged specifically with my with this Instagram page. In case you have multiple Instagram pages, you need to determine the source. And in this case, I'm actually interested in this specific Instagram page followers. The second step is to select the event. 
so basically, do you want people who have visited your professional account, people who engaged with any post or ad, people who sent a message, or people who saved any ad or post? These all uh, indicate different level of engagement. My recommendation is, especially in the beginning, especially if you are a new business, you don't usually, you don't probably have a lot of people who have saved any post or ad or people who engage. Just go with everyone who engaged with this professional account. This means that anyone who has engaged with your professional account in any way in the past 365 days is the maximum, but you can also do one month, two months, three months. It depends on how many days you actually want to go back in creating this audience. Excuse me, Lama. Yes. Excuse me. Is there the possibility to choose uh, multiple choices, like everyone who engaged and uh, another another um, option or okay. it's okay. so this is a very good question in the same audience you can only select one here but what you can actually do uh, uh no actually sorry if you click on this um, one second let me so so usually the way i would do it the usually i would do it is that uh i would create them as separate audiences and then use them in the same ad set. But what you can do is you can also do this. Let me show you again. It was Noor who was asking, right? So if you click on include more people here, you can select your account again, your Instagram page again, and then select a different event. So anyone who visited this professional account profile. So if you do this, your audience is either going to have people who engage with your professional account or anyone who visited the professional account profile. Okay, thank you. You can add more and more if you want. The second thing that you need to do is you actually uh, give it a name and it's important to give it a name because so that when you're setting up the campaign, you can actually create this audience. So Instagram um, engagers 365 days. And then you click on create the audience. So what happens now after you click, click on create the audience is that Instagram is going to look at these people and start populating it. Do you see this here? Instagram is actually still populating it. Why? Now, Instagram or Facebook is actually looking at the profiles of everyone that has um, engaged with your Instagram and they're populating it into a pool of audience. I just want to tell you something because some people think that this means that Instagram is going to give you this information. Instagram will not give you this information. So after you populate this audience, you don't know their names or their Instagram profiles or their phone number for privacy reasons. You don't know any of this. But when we now set up a campaign, and we select this audience, there is, this actually increases your chance of reaching these people. Because Instagram, at the back end, they actually know who is the audience that you selected and who are the people who engaged your, uh, engage with your Instagram. So through this audience, they can actually target anyone that has engaged with your Instagram page. Okay. So the second step or what we have to do is you're going to have to go to your ads manager to actually set up the campaign. As you can see, your ads manager and everything in it, when we talk about reporting, when we talk about uh, advertising, and we're talking about setting up anything, everything is divided into three different um, levels. The first one is the campaign level, the second one is the ad set level, and the third one is actually the ads level. If we talk specifically about the campaigns level, this is uh, basic where we said we're going to create the campaign's objective. If I want to set up the campaign that we talked about and I just want to target the people who recently engaged with my Instagram account, what I need to do is click on the button create. And then the first option, as I've mentioned, would be to select the campaign objective. You can only select one campaign objective. And for your... Uh, Sorry. And for, for the specific objective of increasing your sales, you have to go with the option conversion because that is the option for selling your product. The first step you're going to have to do is to actually select a name for this campaign. Again, the name is just for you. I'm just going to say conversion, uh, Instagram engagers. 
When we come to the second level, and that is basically the ad set level, if you look at it, this is basically the, and we, if you want to go back to the slides and just compare, this is actually where we set the level where you select your budget, your campaign schedule, language, target audience, location, demographic channels, and placement. Something very also something very important that you need to include here, and that is your pixel. So if you have your pixel properly set up, you should be able to actually select it from here. Okay, sorry, this account doesn't actually have a pixel. Okay, so you can select the pixel from here. And then the second important thing that you have to select is to actually select a um, an event. What do I mean by an event? When I mentioned to you a bit that any conversion or any action where you're sending someone from your website to, sorry, from Instagram or from Facebook to your website, this is actually considered a conversion campaign. Purchase, which is in what we're interested in and because we want to sell more products, is one of the events that Facebook allows you to optimize for. In addition to this, your campaign can be, uh, can, the objective of your campaign can be to get more people to add to cart or more people to view an image on your website or more people to actually sign up to a forum or more people to book an, 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 um, uh, an event or an appointment. So by selecting your conversion event, you are actually telling Facebook exactly what is the event that you are after. And that is very important. Facebook is smart. Facebook uses artificial intelligence, but Facebook is not smart enough to know unless you specifically as a human need to actually define the event that you want. Uh, so. If we want to sell more people, we want to sell more products, then the objective in this case is going to be specifically purchase because that is what we are interested in. Now, in the second uh, thing that you have to determine is you have to determine your daily budget. How much do you actually want to spend on a daily basis on this campaign? Do you want to spend 30 dirham? Do you want to spend 50 dirham? This depends on how much budget you have, on what is your objective, what is the return on ad spend that you're looking for. So there's a lot of things that actually are involved in determining the uh, budget. Now, the uh, second thing that we want to talk about, I'll take, I'll take questions at the end. So meet is just that how to determine the budget is a very, uh, like, <laughs> it's a very basically big topic to discuss. So we can take it at, at the end. Let me just finish this section and then I will answer your questions. If that's okay. Okay, now the second uh, thing that you need to do is to determine the schedule. When do you want your campaign? Do you want it to go live today or do you want to schedule it um, later uh, on? Something very important that you have to do is, okay, so now we've set the budget, we have decided on the uh, events that we want to do and we've decided all of this. How do we actually select the audience that you want? Selecting the audience, depending on what is the audience that you want to select. If you want to select a custom audience, which is in our case, the, uh, in, uh, the Instagram engager audience, this is the audience that we have just created. Then you have to come to the custom audiences section and select either the custom audience or the lookalike audiences. This is where you select a custom audience or a lookalike audience. However, if you want to select um, if you want to target people, let's say that you are a completely new business. You don't have any Instagram engagers. You don't have anyone that has bought from you before. You don't have any website visitors. You don't have any type of a custom audience. How can you target people? You can actually target people depending on their interest and their behavior or what we call a core audience. In this case, you have to select a core audiences by coming here to your detailed targeting option and then selecting the detailed targeting options that you are interested in. So do you wanna include people who come from, uh, who are interested in fashion, or who are interested in a specific brand or people who are interested in, you can actually target based on demographics, based on job titles, based on interests, and even based on behavior. So you wanna target people who have recently been engaged online shoppers. You wanna target people who are uh, admins of Facebook business groups, you want to target people who are 
uh, interested in a specific brand like Zara or on uh, or in ASOS.com, you want to target people who are interested in specific beauty brands like Clarence or Chanel or Dior or whatever it is, you can target. There is a, there are hundreds of options of targets and actually thousands of targets on um, uh, combinations that you can target on Facebook. Now, since this specific ad set is especially for Instagram engagers, we are not going to include any of the demographics because if, if you include the demographics, you're telling Facebook that I am interested in people who are Instagram engagers and also interested in something else. So you would be really restricting your audience. This is one of the good reasons why we would actually recommend that you have multiple ad sets. So if in addition to targeting my Instagram engagers, I also want to target people who are interested in fashion or in a beauty brand, what I will do is that I will create a second ad set. So I will actually, I will actually create a second ad set here. If you, if you come here, you can simply, um, it's a bit slow. You can actually create a second ad set here. And that, that new ad set can become your interest targeting. Okay. If we want to talk specifically about uh, Instagram engagers, and this is the specific ad set that we have mentioned, something important I just want to talk to you about, and that is geotargeting or locations. You can target people based on a country or based on a city or based on a specific demographic. And we use targeting for two options. We use targeting to limit the target audience that we have. Let's say that um, your target audience, let's say you, you only deliver right now to people who are living in Dubai. So instead of targeting everyone in the UAE, you can target people specifically who live in Dubai as a city. In addition to this, you can actually go one step further. Let's say that you wanna target people who are specifically in downtown area only or in the palm only, or in a, in a, or you're interested in targeting people in Dubai and also targeting people who are in Abu Dhabi, but not entire Abu Dhabi. You cannot cover the whole thing. You can only cover, for example, a Reem Island in Abu Dhabi. So what you can do is you can actually say, okay, I want to target Dubai. And then I specifically want to target a Reem uh, Island. Now, the the uh, second thing that you can also select is to select the age group of the people that you want to target again the recommendation is if you have a custom audience of people who are engaging with you custom audience is already a narrow audience which means it's a small audience and it's already an audience that is interested in you so you don't need to narrow down your audience i would not put a lot of restrictions on age maybe sometimes gender if my product is very gender specific like if I'm selling makeup and I only want to target women or something like that, then in that case, I might put a restriction. But it is important to put restrictions when you are targeting based on interest or based on what we call specifically core audiences. The second thing you can do is you can actually select the language. And then something very important I want to mention before we move to the ad section is here. If you want to target people only on Instagram, you have to come here and unselect Facebook audience network and messenger and keep Instagram only. The second thing you can do is you can come further and decide what are the feeds that you want to target. Are you interested in Instagram stories, Instagram feed, um, uh, Instagram shop, Instagram explore? So where do you want your ads to actually show up? You can select this by selecting the placements from here. The last step in actually selecting or creating your campaign is creating your ad. At the ad level, this is where you select your, uh, your page. As I mentioned, don't worry about this. It's not going to be an issue for you. I have multiple pages, so I have actually to select the page, but keep something in mind. If your ad is, if you have two businesses or three businesses and multiple Instagram accounts, you want to make sure that 
the ads identity or the Instagram page identity is the right one. Because if you have a business for clothing and a business for cooking, you don't want to show your cooking ads on the other account and vice versa. So this is why the purpose of having an identity, if you actually have multiple Instagram accounts or multiple uh, business accounts. Now, the last thing that what you could also select here is to select the um, the images of your um, so as part of your ad creative is where you have to actually select the image select the video and also select the i just want to mention something very quickly here because we have to leave some time for questions is that in addition to actually selecting your um, uh, your page identity you have to select the format of your ad and then what you also have to select is the images, the videos, and the link. What do you mean by this? The image that you actually select here to in, in your account, the, uh, the text and the video is, is specifically the actual ad that the customer is going to select. So the image at this level is where you select the image of your ad, is where you select the call to action. In this case, it's always going to be uh, shop now. Uh, shop now and then you also have to select the you have to insert the text and your website url website url is basically the the place where you want your uh customers or you want your your audience to actually go to okay guys so what we're gonna do now is uh nagina is gonna join us for a few minutes to um uh, to tell you a little bit about the uh, courses and then th that we have and then after this i am actually going to answer your questions i know that there are a few questions and i'm sure that you guys have more questions so i'll be more than happy to answer these questions for you hello hello hi nagina hi how are you very good great thank you for the great session it was amazing sure uh, do you want to share your screen from your side, or is it fine if I just share it? I think this is fine. Okay, yeah, sure. I don't know. I, and great. Um, I've been chatting with a lot of people here, and I see that there is a lot of uh, interaction between social media that they have with their businesses. So, can anyone tell me if if anyone's actually trying to you know run paid ads here in UAE? for their businesses. Okay, that's great. That's great. So are you guys just focused on social media? Or is it like uh, uh, Google Ads as well? And, uh, you know, other uh, channels? IG only. Okay, I see both. Then I see Okay, IG. Both. Nice, nice. Okay. So I see most of them here are trying to run ads, uh, paid ads already. How is the journey so far for, for all of you guys here? Like, are you struggling with anything specifically uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, running paid ads? Any, any, anyone, any questions you have? Any, any problems you're facing right now? Okay, no, no problems. Okay, audience size and budget. Haven't had my luck probably because, okay, wow. How to run them efficiently. Okay, struggling with conversations in five. Okay, that's, that's very interesting, interesting insight. Thank you for sharing all of this. Uh, what I would also uh, want to want you to understand is that, you know, there is always a process process to understand how to do ads on, on all social media channels, on Google. So you need to really understand the, the complete picture of digital marketing in, in, in order 
to process uh, you know all of those uh, one second I can hear myself one second <laughs> uh, we can hear you Nagina go ahead can you all hear myself can you all hear yes. me hello yes yes we can hear you Nagina wait I cannot hear myself one second okay can you guys still hear me Okay, yes, yes, sorry, my yes. bad. Um, so what I, I'm sorry for all this. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm just connected with two fonts here, that's why. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say here is that uh, what digital marketing really helps you is to really understand the complete process of digital marketing and to be able to be more efficient, target better people within uh, the budget that you want it to be in. So we have a digital marketing course where we help you understand and go deeper dive on these things. And you know, many people like you, uh, they've done our course and they've actually achieved uh, what they wanted as well. I mean, I can remember of one of the uh, uh, participants who actually uh, ran ads during the course itself and had, I think, uh, 15,000 dirhams of worth, uh, uh, you know, leads that he got from the, uh, from the Google ads and social media channels as well. So I, I'm, I'm, I'll be really, really happy to chat with you guys uh, after the course, uh, sorry, after the session as well, to discuss about the course or about your, you know, your needs, your uh, goals and objectives that you have for your businesses. And I see that a lot of people, you, uh, you know, all of, uh, all of you here, most of them, I would say, have their own businesses here. So I would definitely love to reconnect with you again after the session. And uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, the course, I would love to chat with you. Um, and you can drop down the questions right down there. I'm happy to answer them for you. And for everyone uh, else, I mean, if you'd like to talk to me after the course, you can drop your mobile numbers. And, I, and then I can give you a quick call and we can discuss about it in detail. Obviously, I cannot uh, mention all of these things here. I would love to have a detailed conversation to understand about your profile, your goals, your objectives, your problems, and then we discuss about it in detail. So if you guys don't mind dropping in your mobile numbers, I mean, you can send me a uh, direct private message as well if you don't wanna do it to everyone. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for showing up. Any questions for Lama as well? Please feel free to ask. I think there are a few questions, Nagina, so I'm gonna yeah. answer them. Thank you so much, Nagina, 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 for this. And definitely, guys, if you have any question, Nagina is your go-to girl. Uh, anything in terms of courses, she'd really be able to help you. Okay, what are the best courses that can help you? Uh, obviously, what we've covered today is just a sneak peek of what we usually cover during these courses. There's actually more details and we go into in depth into the different channels. Now, I know that you guys have some questions, so I will answer them. Um, um, I'm just trying to actually find all the questions. There is one question about how to determine the budget on your Instagram. So this is actually a very uh, like different, it's a very, big, let's say a big topic. There are two main ways of how to determine the budget. The first one, and it's a very common way is that people like usually if you had a startup, you can say that the maximum amount of budget that you can allocate per month is let's say 30,000 uh, dirham, which means that every day, the maximum you can spend is a thousand dirham a day. So a simple way is basically what we call the top down approach of budgeting, which is basically saying, this is the budget I have, this is how much I can spend. So this is basically, um, we're gonna take this budget, split it across the month or across the week and uh, split it into equal amounts or sometimes slightly higher amounts if let's say I have an offer at a specific period. The second approach is usually the approach that you get after some experience or through basically after some understanding and after some running campaigns. If you are aware of what is your average cost per order, which means how much on average do you have to pay to Facebook in order to get one conversion or to sell one order. In that case, if you already have this number, then the approach for your budgeting becomes bottom up which means you say, I want to achieve 100,000 dirham in sales this month. 
how much do I actually need to invent to invest and you kind of like reverse engineer it so it could be either one of those approaches depending on are you, you some businesses say the maximum I have is 10,000 dirham this is what I can spend and then we actually divide it across other says I want to reach 100,000 dirham how much do I spend so we have to do some calculations to assess what is their um, what is basically the budget that they need the second question was uh, for from Katerina. She was asking, is there any requirement or limitation to uh, the minimum? Um, the Basically, sorry, I'm just trying to find the question. I think Katerina, you were asking, what is the uh, minimum audience size? So there isn't really a minimum audience size. It depends on what kind of audiences. Custom audiences um, naturally have much, much smaller uh, uh, types, uh, much more smaller in size. If you want to look at the amount of people that visit your website or the amount of people that engage or the people who shop, you can actually have a custom audience that only has a few hundred people. And that is completely fine. You just need to be mindful in the budget and spend a good amount to reach them, but not spend too much because you also don't want to bore them with complete with a lot of frequency of your ads. Now, it also depends on your industry and on your market. If you let's say you want to target people in Bahrain, it's a much smaller audience, it's a much smaller market. If you have an audience of 100 or 200,000 people, this actually is a very big, broad audience. While in Saudi or in the US, I would consider this a small audience compared to the population and compared to the potential audience size. So to determine how big or small your audience is, you have to keep in mind what is the industry, who is your target audience, and what is the potential audience size. If we look at the UAE, everyone who lives in the UAE is 11 million. If your target audience is women between the age of, uh, if your target audience is all women, that would be around 4 million because the UAE has more men than women. So let's say 4 million women who live in the UAE. Uh, so then you have to see how does your audience that selection compares to the total available potential target audience. Um, the other questions that I have is, uh, uh, okay, so uh, Katerina, to actually answer your question, is there a requirement limitation for the minimum size of the custom audience to be able to create a lookalike audience from it? Yes, the minimum used to be uh, 1,000. I think they've dropped it now to a few hundred. So if you have 500 or 600, you should be able to create a custom audience. Now, the bigger the audience size, obviously, the, the better. I would say not less than 200 or 300 uh, people. Okay, so some of the other questions that I have is, um, what about Instagram shopping? Is it an effective way to sell? What are the requirements to open this kind of shop on IG? So Instagram shopping does have, uh, it is definitely useful. It is, uh, you can definitely benefit from it. One thing that you need to keep in mind is that you are still, it, it is still basically your organic reach or some extra exposure or some, you will still have to advertise, you will still have to push to reach more people, but it's a very good way to be able to sell people who are, um, it's a very good way to be able to sell people um, who are able to, um, basically to sell people who are already on your page and you're engaged with it. What are the requirements? You need to have a Facebook business manager account. You need to have a catalog for your website connected. And then you need to submit this for Instagram on your Facebook business manager account. If the products get approved, then you get the approval to run the ad. Uh, okay, guys, I'm really happy that you have all of these questions. So I'm just gonna try to go through them very quickly to be mindful of time. One more question that we've had is, um, so how to measure the results of your campaign? Actually, yes, this is a very big question to ask, but the, uh, the, the very quick answer would be depending on your campaign objective. 
In this case, we talked about the campaign objective that uh, with, with the objective of conversions or sales. So you measure your results based on the return on ad spend, whether based on the case per cost per order. So how much is it actually get, uh, costing you to get to a single order? And then also based on uh, your conversion value, basically how much money are you getting after investing this amount? The other question is, um, so Katrina, it could probably be a bug because if you, as if, if the custom audience is 4.3, then it is definitely more than enough to create a lookalike audience out of it. So question by Sumit is, what is a seven day attribution? So seven day attribution, basically, attribution in general is after someone clicks on the, what is usually who gets credit or which channel which ad gets credit for someone for a conversion that happens through your ad so if you have an if you have a ad, if you have an ad on instagram someone um clicked on it and then went to your store and actually bought seven days attribution has to do with the day from the day first clicked or viewed your ad to the day they actually bought if you have seven day attribution selected it means whether someone uh, select, clicked on your ad and bought on the same day or two days in advance or three days in advance up until seven days, this sale will still be attributed back to your Instagram, which may, which basically means that Instagram is going to show it as a sale that happened through its uh, campaign. Um, okay. Uh, some of the other question is, are Instagram ads effective for B2B sales? They can be, depending on the type of business that you want, sorry, that you want to target and the kind of people that you want to target. Now, for some of B2B businesses, maybe LinkedIn might be more effective or maybe, uh, but uh, maybe let's say email marketing might be more effective or other channels. But if you're talking about uh, specifically, um, if you're talking specifically about, let's say, your studio and you want to target other small businesses on Instagram, or let's say that uh, you want to target people who are admin of specific Facebook pages because this indicates that they are businesses. So it really depends on the type of business that you have and the type of industry. For, time, for specific types of businesses and industries, it can be. For others, it might be a bit more tricky, but one thing for sure, which is retargeting, you could retarget people on any page. So if you actually have people visiting your website or you have people engaging with your Instagram account, then you should definitely retarget them regardless of whether your business is a B2B or a B2C. Um, How should how should how long should the campaign actually um, uh, run before results are visible? As soon as the campaign runs, within the first basically uh, second or within the sorry not the first second. I mean, as soon as there is one impression or there is one person that you have seen the ad, the results are going to start showing in the campaign. But if we're talking about optimizations or how much should you wait before you judge the campaign, you should give it at least five to seven days in order for Facebook Pixel to start learning, Facebook algorithm to actually start learning. I also have two questions, two remaining questions, I think by um, Katerina. The share button, Katerina, is for, um, uh, you can share audiences among other ads managers. So if you have two ads manager, each one of them has separate audiences. You can actually share one audience from one from uh, one uh, business manager or one ads manager to the other ads manager. Okay, guys. Uh, any other questions? You are welcome, Katrina. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for your time. I really hope that this was actually a beneficial session for you. Uh, let's stay connected. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn at Lama Youssef. And uh, we're happy to connect. Thank you so much for joining. And if you have any, um, and hope to actually see you on future courses and future webinars and future webinars with uh, meetups with startups, with Astrolabs.
Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Have a nice day.